Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the weapons of hot dogs, horseshoes and hand grenades. Today we are taking a look at this little guy. This is the ruby pistol. And in game it is a very little guy. So what is the ruby pistol? Well the ruby pistol is a pistol that's from the early 1900s. It is actually based on a Colt design. It's based on the Colt or a branding design. It's based on the Colt 1903 if I recall correctly. So wh why is this a thing? Well it's a thing because of Spanish at the time patent law. So if you didn't produce your pistol in Spain or if you didn't manufacture in Spain your patent was not enforceable in Spain. So since Colt of course didn't produce his, their pistols in Spain, the 1903 was not patented in Spain, or I believe it was, but they couldn't enforce it. So that meant Spanish could copy it to their... Uh, they, they could copy it. So uh, of course th not a big problem until World War I happens. France is in big need of pistols. So loads of these ruby pistols get produced, a lot, of varying quality, varying part fitments, some rubies from one factory you couldn't sell if it parts from another, so the French even demanded that the base plate of the pistol were marked so that you, or of the mag were marked so that you would know which pistols it would fit in. So the French used this a lot in World War One. And there were a few others that would uh, adopt it. And if you want an in-depth video on this, check out CN Arsenal. Can't recommend them enough. It's long, it's worth it. So, yeah, because of World War One, these things got big. So let's go over what they actually are other than, you know, patent infringement, basically. So, they are chambered. In this little cartridge, 32 ACP, it holds 8 rounds in the magazine, I believe, which is more than the norm at the time, which for pistols were usually... I am retarded. Pistols usually uh, had 6 or 7 rounds, like the Browning 1911 had 7. This one has 8 in the magazine, and let's double check that. This one actually has 9 in the magazine. And if we take a look at... Uh, this? Yeah, okay, not too bad. So this is a small pistol. And uh, it is very compact. Its sides, as you notice though, those are less than ideal. Very small. But this pistol works like any old Browning pistol, basically. You have a slide. You have a magazine, it has a 9 in the magazine, 1 in chamber, as we just discovered, which is quite a bit. Of course, 32 ACP doesn't pack a punch, so that extra magazine capacity is useful. So that you can just uh, lay the fire down on the enemy. Does it not have a bolt release or a slide release? It does not seem like it has a slide release. That is uh, no bueno. Or I just messed up with my index controllers. That's also possible. It also has a... The real thing has a heel release for the magazine. But of course, hot dogs, horses and hand grenades. You just press that button. And you go. It being a pistol, it is semi-auto only, and as we discovered a bit earlier, it does lock open on empty, which is uh, always a nice feature, so that you always know when you're empty. I forgot to mention, the magazine, single stack. Like, a lot of pistols from that time. But yeah, th this is the Ruby Short. It is a story of basically patent infringement legalized because of Spanish copyright law, or patent law at the time. And I mean... It's an alright pistol. It is very small. Straight grip, not a fan of that. It it doesn't look to be the most comfortable. The, the cartridge, 32 ACP. It's a bit weak. The sides, they suck. I'd rather take 
1911 or something like that over this, or a Luger. But hey, the French, they were at war. They needed anything they could get their hands on. After all, they even used freaking rolling block rifles, which were very out of date in World War I. It did cause a lot of mess, though. Just check out CN Arsenal's video on the Ruby to know the mess. But this has been me covering the Ruby in H3VR. Nothing too special. It's, it's a historic piece, and I love me historic pieces. It's just not a great one. So, thank you all for watching. I do hope you all enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and all of that. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!